It's actually <laughs> the warmth and joy of the Arab people is so inviting, as I have found it everywhere. In your hospitality, your giving of charity, and your great religious faith. Ah, well, I want to congratulate you, Middle East Veg Group, for your effort, for your exciting historic first Congress. And a big congratulations, especially to all of you, Veg Heroes of the World and the Middle East. <laughs> Allah, sure, we have mercy upon you for giving mercy to other beings. This was the hadith, the wisdom of the compassionate Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Through this excellent event and your talented and caring contributions, you have confirmed the many benefits of plant-based living both for ourselves and our animals, co-inhabitants. And now we can go perhaps even one step further in considering the vegan lifestyle as necessary to actually save humanity and the planet. Some of you may be aware already, but just so that we all have the same understanding, I would like to emphasize again that our situation is already very grave. Human survival is at stake due to climate change and environmental damages. To grasp this urgency, we can pick any region of the globe, like, for instance, the Middle East, to see how the climate change has affected our people our world, our animals, our environment. Now, if you allow me, we shall go through some of the important events concerning your beautiful regions. Number one, climate change and environmental issue in the United Arab Emirates. The Arab region is one of the world's most vulnerable to climate change. I am very sorry to know this, and I'm sorry to have to tell you. It uh, is it's not a very uh, <laughs> it's not a very pleasant thing to inform your friends. <laughs> that their house is in danger, that their life is in danger. It, it, it could break your heart. Now, scientists have already reported on sea level rise in Egypt, desertification and climate refugees in Syria, dust storms in Iraq, Floods in Yemen, etc., etc. Pardon me, pardon me. <laughs> I'm just too emotional when lives are concerned. You are all my friends, even though we haven't met each other. I have so much love for this world and for the people of this world because I've met many of you. <laughs> And you are so nice, so nice, so nice. And you don't deserve to suffer at all. None of us deserve any of this suffering, either from disease or from climate change. Now, since we are in the United Arab Emirates, we will focus on the major environmental issues your country is facing. Number two, water shortage. Uh, climate change has 
brought hot temperatures and reduced an erratic rainfall to the Middle East, including in the United Arab Emirates. Making the situation worse now is the fact that current consumption rates of water are unsustainable. Even with several desalination plants in place, suppose there was an emergency and more water could not be produced. Then your country, United Arab Emirates, only has about four days of fresh water supply for her people, or even less than that. Abu Dhabi's groundwater supplies have been reduced by almost one-fifth just since 2003. I think you know that. Do you? Yes, Supreme Master, they are now getting uh, uh, new information because we live in an illusion that, you know, the water is going to be there. But thank you for sharing these statistics with us. Okay, then I will continue to share more with you. You will be more surprised. I'm sorry, I wish I could bring you more pleasant news, but friends have to tell each other the truth, right, if you allow me. Now, we go to number three section, which is groundwater depletion. We could have uh, other kind of water, but if groundwater is depleted and we are in deep trouble, I'm sure you understand this. Because a prolonged uh, drought coupled with higher use is quickly depleting groundwater throughout the Emirate especially in Abu Dhabi, where this source is relied upon for 71% of the total supply, now, especially for agriculture. However, water consumption is noted to be 24 times higher than the land's ability to recharge and replenish the water the natural way and unusable salt water is now found at shallow depths even. They are shrinking all kind of water, not just sweet water, even salty water is shrinking. Instead of reaching water at a depth of six meter as uh, they did in the past, in order to dig the well, now the well diggers currently have to go as deep as 100 meters below the ground before finding it, or in some cases not even be able to find any water at all after 100 meters deep digging. Number four concern food insecurity. Agriculture is already difficult due to the shrinking water supply. Now we have extreme heat and increasingly salty soil. And salty soil we cannot cultivate. I'm sure you know that. Number five, desalinization of water, unsustainable, very unsustainable. Okay. Meanwhile, Dubai's water is primarily human-made, I'm sure you all know that, through desalinization. The United Arab Emirates is the second largest user of desalinated water in the whole world. But desalinization plants use a lot, a lot, a lot of energy and emit a lot, a lot of carbon dioxide on top of that. There are also other side effects I'm going to tell you. 
they will spew enormous quantities of hot brine and chemicals into the sea. This pollution accelerates the warming of the water while increasing its